I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money. This is how. If you follow my channel with any kind of regularity, then you know. I've been a pretty big cheerleader when it comes to Film Hub. I've been using Film Hub for about four years. I have over 36 feature films with them, plus a few shorts and a TV series. My experience has been overall great. I honestly have very few complaints, and the few I do have are really no big deal in light of the positives. But I heard from a filmmaker recently who had had a really bad experience with them, and the filmmaker had mentioned that it was my first video on Film Hub that had convinced them to give it a go. Now, while I don't feel really responsible for this particular case, I did want to do a video laying out some of the potential issues filmmakers can run into when using Film Hub to help distribute their films. These were compiled mainly from other filmmakers, but also from my own experiences, and I'll give you some tips on how to deal with each of these issues. My biggest complaint is when they know why your video fails QC, but never actually specify in a way that makes it easier to fix it. For example, one problem was my movie had three seconds of black before the video, instead of the one second that they ask for. At the time, I was not aware of this. In the QC report, they just said that there was a problem with the start of my video and listed all of their rules for openings of videos for me to go through all on my own and try to guess which one applied to me. I second this. They said the text on my poster was too small, yet it was larger and clearer text than what passed QC on a previous film. I'm very confused what the standard is. QC feedback there is just not clear enough. I'll kind of third this one. The QC process at Film Hub isn't the best. Well, let me rephrase that. Their communication about the QC process isn't the best. For example, they don't have a standardized QC form like most quality control houses. They instead communicate by email via a bunch of stock responses, which can be hard to decipher sometimes. Honestly, I don't have a really good fix here other than make yourself really familiar with their frequently asked questions, like read all their support stuff, and understand what their standards are and what they're looking for. And then over time, hopefully you'll get better with that. I'd say inability to restrict a specific channel from releasing before a desired date is the main problem. Not really their fault but has channel select titles, they just randomly push them out without any consistency. Sometimes it takes days, other times weeks or months. Really does not give us a chance to have a specific VOD release date that can be sent out in a press release. You see, a lot of publications want one to two months prior notice to release. The way Film Hub releases doesn't really help indie filmmakers have an organized release process. I totally get this, and I actually kind of agree with this filmmaker. In a, in a perfect world, we would be able to set our release dates. But honestly, in this current streaming climate, unless you're a studio with the power to dictate a release schedule, this kind of thing is becoming common even amongst regular distributors. Real talk? This is the land we live in, and something we basically have to get used to and adjust accordingly. And you can still do a specific release date using places like Vimeo On Demand or releasing through Gumroad or your own website in addition to the Film Hub release. And you can pick that release date for the platforms you can control and then just wait to widen out on the Film Hub platforms. Yeah, it's not a perfect solution, mind you, but honestly, I don't know what else to tell you. And I've released at least a dozen features this year and none had a specific advanced release date. And I did just fine. But let's see what the CEO of Film Hub has to say about this one. This is just something we need to realize that is simply changing in the industry. More and more channels don't commit to release dates due to the volume of titles they are dealing with. We all have to become more nimble and prepare to have release plans ready to go for when a title does go up. And PR firms are working with publications as well to change their beliefs in these processes. Also, 
Filmmakers need to treat each release on a new platform as a separate new release. Each time you release on a new platform, it's a new potential audience you couldn't reach before. That's a really good way to look at it. I, I really like the bit about each new release being a potential to find a new audience. Having to adjust years after the initial uploads when standards change. I've had two feature documentaries with them in the $50,000 to $100,000 budget range. They placed them on some tiny platforms, and I think I've seen a few dollars in earnings. And then after a year, they changed their tech requirements, and now neither film passes QC. Not really worth putting in the extra work for a few dollars more a year. IMO. I totally get your logic there, but look, you never know when one of those tiny little platforms will take off or when a new one will come up and become the next Tubi. Diversifying and exploiting every possible avenue stream that you can for your movie is pretty essential to longevity these days. I brought up this exact issue with the CEO of Film Hub. Let's see what he has to say. The main issue here is that our standards have to change over time based on feedback from our channel partners, platforms. Our goal at FilmHub is to help filmmakers make their titles eligible for as many channels as possible. We could be looser with requirements, but that would lead to a worse experience for filmmakers as they wouldn't be eligible for a number of channels. We try our best to make the standards as exacting as possible, but some checks require a human eye, which can lead to some subjectivity. The key is we are aligned with our filmmakers. We want to help filmmakers have the best chance for success. Also key here is typically the reason some of these films are only making a few dollars is their titles aren't eligible for larger channels that have greater reach. So if they don't update their assets, they miss out on real revenue. Without strong assets, a film, regardless of how strong it is, will have no chance of getting picked up by a streaming channel that has a large audience. Not being able to find direct links or info where to find channels. I think no information about the companies that they place your movies with. It's just a name you have to go look up somewhere. No terms listed. Like how long is it up? Or what regions does that platform cover exactly? Also, I do wish that every channel had at least a direct link to their service. These are platforms my movies are on, and I can't even find them. Okay, you know, I do wish there was a little more information about the platforms that they're placing you on, and I wish the rates or splits were shared more openly. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but I would assume that the platforms are dictating this and don't openly want their rates and splits shared. I think Film Hub's arms are tied in that respect. Hopefully this is something that'll change more in the future. As for finding the platforms, many of these platforms are not online. They're apps or Roku-based channels that don't really appear in a typical Google search. And if I'm not mistaken, and I'm pretty sure I'm not, Film Hub does list what type of provider each channel is. That said, it could be a little more clear. There could be a little more detail. Insights are confusing. The dashboard is very vague and clunky. I wish there were more detailed insights per channel. Also, my film says it has 10 apps delivered, but I can only find my movie on two of them. Maybe it takes a long time before they appear. I've talked at great lengths before about Film Hub's insights and earnings, and I have a full video dedicated just to it. Link is in the description, and maybe right here. And yes, it's a bit confusing, but honestly, I don't know how they can make it any clearer. You don't know who they're pitching to or when films go live. Lack of transparency about who they're pitching the film to, impersonal communication, and no effort to address issues. No way to reach someone via phone conversation. No control over who they pitch the film to. No idea when films will go live on a platform. Those are just a few of the issues I have. Here's what Film Hub had to say about this one. 
Activity around who has evaluated your title is something we are actively working on. We are arms and legs ahead of traditional distribution by having order status for filmmakers to see, but we want to deepen these insights with an activity feed so filmmakers can see when a channel buyer reviews their artwork or watches a screener, etc. But we always have our teams available to discuss any issues that may arise via email. I think the one thing most of these issues have in common is clarity or communication. When you ask FilmHub a question or contact support, it often takes some time for them to get back to you. You know, it's all by email. Although, a lot of businesses are like that these days. But even more important than that is often when these responses do come, they're often vague or just stock responses straight out of their FAQs that basically ignore the specific question that was asked or just give a very vague general response. Now, all that said, I think we filmmakers should realize that FilmHub is not a giant corporation. It's basically a mom and pop shop that deals with over 12,000 filmmakers. If they were to increase their manpower and support staff to make this easier, they would also have to increase the amount that they're charging on the back end. Is the system perfect? No. But what system is perfect? And the service and empowerment they're providing to indie filmmakers is more than worth these minor quibbles, at least in my opinion. So I hope you found this helpful. I've done a bunch of videos on FilmHub. One of the very best ones is right here. So check it out. But whatever you do, keep making movies.